Hey guys, welcome back to Oak Abode. Today I am going over the most common beginner chicken keeping mistakes that we come across. We get lots of messages from people saying that something happened and asking how we can fix it. And the best thing that I think I can do at this point is tell you guys what those mistakes are so that you can kind of prevent them from the beginning. I wanna give a big thank you to Upside for sponsoring today's video. It's been raining on and off, so I hope you guys don't mind this weird lighting and the sound of rain in the background. Okay, I'm gonna give you eight of the most common chicken keeping mistakes that we see, but let me know in the comments if this was helpful for you and if you wanna see more, because I have a list of like 30 that I could go over. Mistake number one is having too many chickens for the space that you have for the chickens. So this could be either too many chickens for the coop, too many chickens for the chicken run, or too many chickens for the brooder if you are raising baby chicks. I know everybody wants a hard and fast answer for how many chickens fit into X many square feet in the coop or in the run. Some bloggers will give you a number. The truth is that there is no exact number. It kind of depends on the chicken's personality. It depends on your environment, how much stimulation they have, whether they have time free ranging or not. I think the general consensus is like three to four square feet for the run and like two to three square feet for the coop. But again, these are just kind of general estimations. I always just say, go with kind of what the Google search says and then add more space if you can, because it's much more common for people to not have enough space for the chickens that they have, as opposed to having too much space, which is really pretty rare, a lot more rare than people think. Same with the brooder. If you are running low on space, one thing you can do besides getting rid of chickens or adding more space, one thing that you can do is just provide more stimulus. So give them treats, give them toys, and especially if you can free range or let them out in like a protected yard to have more stimulus, be able to peck around a bit, that's a really good way to help fix the problem of having too many chickens for too little space. Number two, another one of the common problems that we see is choosing the wrong feed. So. To be really specific, the most common mistake in the feed realm, I think, is when people either get the starter grower mix for chicks and never switch over to a layer feed, or they have a flock of grown-up hens and then they add chicks, and the chicks who are not laying are eating the layer feed. Both of these can be a problem in their own way. The main difference with layer feed as, a, as opposed to starter grower is that it has extra calcium, and actually having too much calcium for the chicks can be a problem, I have read at least, on their little systems. They don't have a way to expel the extra calcium because they're not laying eggs. Same goes for roosters. Roosters eating the calcium fortified feed supposedly can cause problems for them long term. So what we do to prevent this problem is if we have roosters or if we have chicks that are not laying eggs yet, everybody gets the starter grower, even the hens, and then we provide extra calcium on the side. My two favorite ways to add extra calcium are by feeding them back their eggshells. You can crush them and bake them if you're worried about egg eating problems or if you're worried about kind of raw egg on the shells. That's not something that we do, but you can do it. And the other way that we love to give them extra calcium is with black soldier fly larvae. You guys know I've gotten so many messages from you guys who have tried it and loved it also. They have more calcium than mealworms and the chickens just totally eat them up. You can also add oyster shells. That's not my favorite way to do it. I do know it's a really common way to do it, so another option. Basically, just having improper feed or specifically a calcium imbalance is another really common problem that we see mainly in the form of soft or easily breaking eggshells. Uh, people message us with that problem and this is a really good way to fix it. Whoops, okay, I guess that was my point number three. So having the improper feed, but also uh, just for getting calcium for your hens specifically. So again, the roosters and the baby chicks don't need it so much, but the hens who are laying eggs are expelling a lot of calcium in their eggshells. So they need that extra calcium, either in the form of layer feed or and or uh, calcium supplements like I mentioned. So we pretty much went over that point already. Like I mentioned, today's video is sponsored by Upside. Upside is one of those things that sounds too good to be true, but I've used it, it's totally legit, and it's a no-brainer. These days, everyone's feeling the pain at the pump or at the grocery store, and pretty much everyone's looking for ways to save some money or get a little cash back, and that's where Upside comes into play. The app is incredibly easy to use. What it does is it tells you businesses in the area that will offer cash back or cash rewards for submitting a receipt from their business to the Upside app. 
All you have to do is check in at the business and pay as usual with a credit or debit card. Then you scan your receipt in the app and you get rewards. A lot of people love to use Upside to get cash back for pumping gas, which is something we're all doing anyway. Something that I love using it for personally is discovering new businesses in the area. To get started, download the free Upside app in the App Store or in Google Play and use my promo code Okabode for $5 cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. In our house, the rule is that when I earn a little more on cash back programs like this, I get to use them on whatever seeds or plants I want in the spring, so it is totally worth it. Number four, another really common problem that we see or that we hear about is people being overprotective or over controlling of their flock of chickens. So a lot of people who get chickens who have had like only pets, not like farmyard or barn animals their whole life, they really wanna control everything and they wanna protect everybody. And I totally get that. I'm not talking overprotecting from predators, that's not really possible in my opinion, but overprotecting them from each other or trying to over control the environment. So this might look like trying too hard to keep certain breeds separate from others because you're worried that they're too small and they won't be able to stand up for themselves or uh, seeing that one hen gets pecked by another maybe when they're at the food dish and it runs away but it freaks them out and then they separate everybody and then they don't know what to do because when they try and reintroduce them then everybody fights even more. There can definitely be bullying situations where you have to step in and you have to separate a chicken to save their life. That absolutely can happen. We have had that happen one time. Um, ironically, it happened because I believe we were being overprotective of them, trying to keep them sheltered in the winter when really they just wanted to get outside in the cold. They didn't care. And then they got too cramped and one of the chickens got bullied to the point where we had to separate her pretty much permanently from the bullying flock. So. Uh, another one is trying to protect them too much from the cold. Chickens are pretty darn hardy. They have a pecking order that they have to establish. I'm talking outside of bullying or somebody is getting beat up. It's okay, in fact, it's important to let them establish that pecking order. It's also important to let them acclimate naturally to the weather, so uh, that's why we don't add supplemental heat in their coop 99% of the time. We want their systems to acclimate naturally um, because it would be dangerous for them to all of a sudden get shocked into cold weather if their heat source went out and we didn't know about it. So. To summarize that point, just in general, being over protective, overbearing of the chickens in terms of letting them work out their own issues that they can, that's a really common problem that we see also, and it causes a lot more problems in the flock and even health-wise for the chickens. On the flip side, my next point is that we see people not being protective enough. It is so heartbreaking when a flock gets decimated by a predator. Predators like coyotes, raccoons, minks, when they get into the coop, they can completely decimate the flock. And a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that like a rooster will prevent against a dog or a coyote. For the most part, the rooster isn't gonna stand a chance against an animal like that. So maybe expecting too much of roosters and not adding enough protection on their own or just not protecting the coop enough a lot of people don't realize that chickens kind of like shut down at night. When they roost, they become really, really dumb and they won't necessarily have the wherewithal to see a predator and fly higher. When they roost, they kind of go as high as they can and then they just kind of shut down. I don't know why that is, but that is why so many of the times a, a predator will get into an enclosure and just kill absolutely every chicken and it's so sad when that happens. So long story short, if you can do any protection against predators, whether it's electric netting, um, I'll link some for you below, whether it's digging your fence into the ground to prevent predators from digging underneath the fence, making sure you have a really solid coop, there are a lot of different ways to do it. I'll let you research those separately, but that is another really common thing that we get messages about, that people got chickens and that they all got eaten or killed, and that is very heartbreaking. So prevent that problem if you can. Kind of on the note of enclosing the coop, another problem we see is when people enclose the coop too much. I, I know this sounds like I'm confusing you guys probably, but a lot of people will, especially in cold climates like ours, we're in Wisconsin, trying to protect the chickens, they will create like a totally airtight coop. Not, not to the point where they suffocate the chickens, but one problem that this creates is that when it's cold, the moisture cannot escape from the coop. And the last thing that you want with chickens in the cold is to have a coop that is cold and moist. If you're gonna have a cold coop, you want it to be cold and dry. So we like to put our airflow at the very top of the coop. We talk about this a lot. Um, 
I've also heard from a lot of people, supposedly some that even live in Alaska and keep chickens in three-sided shelters. They're not even totally enclosed. That's not something I can vouch for personally, but I have heard of people doing that. And my understanding is that moisture or a wet floor, um, wet air is a lot more dangerous to chickens in the cold than just cold, dry air. So uh, we really like to have not a drafty coop, so we like to keep the air flow kind of higher up than where the chickens are. If they want to stay out of the draft, they can stay down low. But you wouldn't believe how many people uh, don't really do their research and just try and close everything up for the winter to try and keep everybody warm. And I think that is one of the worst things that you can do in terms of keeping chickens comfortable and healthy in the winter. So make sure that you have uh, airflow in your coop, whether it's winter or whether you're just keeping them in other circumstances too. You don't want that coop to not have airflow. I have two more points for you, kind of on the note of temperature, having chicks in the wrong temperature. So if you don't have a broody hen who is taking care of your chicks, you're gonna have to simulate the broody hen. Uh, chicks, for the most part, need some source of heat when you're raising them. What we like to use is brooder plates, so they use radiant heat, more like a mama hen. We don't use heat lamps. The brooder plates are safer and they are more like a mama hen comforting for the chicks. So I'll link those for you guys below. Um, I talk in other videos that I can link for you too about why we love the brooder plates, but it is not enough to just take a brooder plate and put it with chicks that are like in 30 degrees outside. I've had multiple people message me saying they lost all their chicks because they just put the brooder plate in and they thought that that would be enough. There has to be a baseline temperature. I wish I could tell you what it is. I don't know. For that reason, we like to keep our chicks in kind of like generally indoor temperature, uh, at least 60 degrees plus the brooder, brooder plate. If it were up to me, I would probably keep it more like 70. But basically really avoiding any temperature extremes with chicks. We like for them to be able to cool off a little bit, so leave the brooder plate if they want to, and then to also go back in and warm up. Another note kind of on the wrong temperature for chicks is having the, if you choose a heat lamp, this is another reason we don't like them. Sometimes people will just heat the whole enclosure with that heat lamp. Chicks can't escape and they get baked. Ooh, sun's really coming out. Uh, another one we've seen is people will put the um, kind of like a heating pad on the bottom of the chick enclosure. And again, the chicks can't escape the heat. They can get too hot and they pass away from that. So. Just make sure you research the ideal chick enclosure. These are all things we've had people message us with and say that they felt horrible about messing up and it's okay, live and, le you live and you'll learn, but hopefully by watching this video, we're preventing it from happening at least a few more times. Finally, the last thing I'll talk about is failing to treat illnesses early. So if you see something wrong with your chick or your chicken, don't wait. Make sure you start researching it right now and researching the fix. A lot of chicken problems can be fixed at home. So people message us with chicken illnesses all the time. My answer is always the same. Take them to a vet. I'm not a vet. Uh, or talk to your local chicken group because I am just not an expert on all chicken illnesses. My biggest recommendation is to join a chicken forum, whether it's backyardchickens.com or your local chicken Facebook group. That way you can post a photo and people can give you local advice. And also, if you just kind of browse it, you're gonna learn a lot from what other people are doing that way too. But long story short, if you see something weird on your chicken's foot, might be bumblefoot, if you see something weird with their crop, uh, it could be sour crop, it could be impacted crop, anything pretty much that you're gonna have to treat in a chicken, you're gonna have a better time treating it if you catch it early. So just get on the internet and start researching if you can, as soon as you notice something. Uh, I, I recommend against just kind of waiting to see if it goes away on its own. Sometimes it does, but again, we get a lot of messages from people who said, I waited too long to do this with kind of the traditional way of approaching it, so what do I do now? Again, my answer is always take them to a vet if you can, but um, local chicken forums and chicken groups are probably the second best option. So once again, those are my first eight kind of beginner chicken mistakes that uh, we would love to see more prevention of. Not that we haven't made our own mistakes too, we definitely have, but those are really common ones. And if you found them helpful, please let us know in the comments because I can make probably two or three more videos of beginner chicken mistakes to prevent uh, that are generally easy to prevent. Thank you again to Upside for sponsoring today's video. If you guys haven't already joined us on Instagram, our Instagram handle is oak underscore abode. And don't forget to hit subscribe if you'd like to join us again in the future. And please leave a comment with your recommendations against beginner chicken mistakes, whether it's a mistake that you made or mistakes you've seen other people make. Everybody can learn from your experience too. 
Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.